All right, guys, my next guest is the star of Bravo TV's Mother Funders, known for her straightforward approach of life, and she lives by that mantra. She has this saying, knowing who you are helps you reject who you are not. And guess what, guys? She's in our fireside chat right now. The illustrious Carla Stevens. Hey, Carla, unmute your mic. Oh, my goodness. Hello. How are you doing, lovely? You know what? I, I cannot complain. This has been an interesting day. <laughs> I cannot. Who you I, I, at this point, I'm going to say I'm glad that I was last because... Um, I don't know if I could have made it otherwise. So thank you. You know, that that's all it always works out the way it's supposed to work out, right? Good, great. So how have you been? It's been a long time. Well, outside the clubhouse, it's been a long time since I know, I've been. right? Look, thank <laughs> goodness for the clubhouse and connecting us back. You know what? I I am well, I cannot complain. I have uh, two teenage boys right now. Um, wow. You know, I have crossed the 50 mark in age. <laughs> and, um, you know, married 27 years. So a lot has been going on. <laughs> well, congratulations on 27 years. And 50, you can't be 50. I need a birth certificate. I need some ID, something. Ooh, actually, I am 51. What? Yes. All right. So let's talk about your, your, your Bravo TV show. How did Mother oh Thunder come about? Oh, my God. You know what? I, I still um, kind of tremble a bit and decide how to say how it came about. Because <laughs> when, when you're actually doing it, you have to say one thing. And now that uh, I'm a few years back out of it, uh, oh. it actually came about. And I think I've said this in many interviews now i actually was being um i was in like the last stage of an interview for the real housewives of atlanta mm -hmm. and um i was waiting for that final call because it was like hey you made it through this hey you made it through that and i got that final call and they said hey we want to give you something at that time that the housewives didn't have and they were like we want to give you something that these ladies want and i said what your own show so they told me that they liked me so much in my life that they wanted to give me my own show. Oh. Um, yeah, based based upon what I had submitted and, you know, just about my life. So I was really blessed. One, I was African-American woman. Mm -hmm. And um, at that time, it was not heard of that your first season on TV, you get your own show. A lot of people, they, you know, they do their season. And some ladies have yet to get their own show. They right. might have you know, uh, you know, spinoffs is what they want. Some of them to this day still don't have a spinoff. So they were like, take it, girl, take it. This is like, this is what these ladies are living for. And so um, it was a determining factor for me. And then also they, I got the opportunity. It was about my life and it was my real life. And um, I got to, um, I did a little bit of everything. I did the casting. Um, my school was able to actually be showcased and actually raise funds, which is what I was doing. So it was a win-win for me. You know, mm -hmm. it, it was like, duh, you have to do this. So um, that's how that came about. I'm trying to get okay. a little more light. Why it's so dark in here? Your lighting was fine. It was? Now, oh, okay. Now, now you're about to mess it up. Now that's okay, fine. Well, right that's right. That's you right. okay, you good. drew it right there. That's The lighting yeah. is good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so that's how it came about. Okay. Okay. Now, now you went from the church scene, right? <laughs> Did I go from the church scene? Really? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, I met you in the church scene. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So so when you when you look at that aspect of your life to mm -hmm. Like CP was talking about kicking that door open and realizing, hey, there's something else I can do because you didn't have to go after television, Real Housewives, but you got your own show. There's so many people watching right now that want their own something and so, you've achieved that. 
Let me tell you this though. I I tell people this. This is my true story. Okay. I was minding my business and doing what it is that I love to do, which is loving my husband, raising my children, and running the businesses that fed us. Mm -hmm. I did not seek out television. I was actually doing what I do as a mom, and that was helping my children find out what they wanted to do in life. So at that time, they wanted to act. They wanted to model. And so once I started in that scene with them, that's how I got involved. Um, you know, I went, I took my children actually to the Bailey agency and they were a set of her first set of children models that started with her agency and my oldest, they were getting booked all the time. And so I developed a relationship with Cynthia. And so that brought me on the scene. And then I started uh, meeting all the other housewives. And so that's kind of how, um, you know, I started actually just, you know, showing up for her. And then I started getting invites. Actually, a uh, they Bravo exec at the same time, mm. one of them, somebody heard my story, which I think somebody was kind of pitching me to them. But then they actually saw me. Another producer saw me on a Merit to Medicine red carpet, which is why, look, long before I even got on TV, too, we would, we would go out to dinner in Buckhead. I'm just being me. I My mother made me dress up. I never wore sneakers when I was a little girl. Like my mother made me dress up. So I was always dressed. Mm. We would go out to a restaurant in Buckhead and it was several times the waiter or waitress would stop my husband and say, who is your wife? Who is she? I know she's somebody. Mm. So it was, you know, I already felt like I'm a, I'm a fabulous mom. So I was living what I believe was a fabulous life. If you, you, you met me in the church, so I'm sure, you know, I was a fabulous church girl. <laughs> So I was doing me. I was not trying to be someone else. And I believe the door that was supposed to open for me opened while I was doing me. So my first season was so important to me because you hear all these things about reality TV. But that first season is so pure mm -hmm. because if people thought, is this fake? Is that fake? No, that right. was your first season is the truest season that you will ever have because things are happening. And right. then you get into that second season. That's when you have to go back and pick up where you left off and you know, it's, it's still real, but you're still, you're curating a lot more because you can't, people don't understand. We can't skip six months though. You guys would feel like, wait a minute. We have to go back and pick up those emotions. We have to go back mm -hmm. and pick up that issue and play it out in this season. So it was, um, it was a beautiful thing for me because I truly believe me being me and enjoy my moment and enjoy the life that I had, it, it kicked me into another drive and opened up a door for me. Yeah. Now, now, a lot of people talk about Clubhouse and, you know, me and you are in the Clubhouse. We posted some rooms. Yes. So, so and I, I see you, I see you sashaying through the hallways and, and mm -hmm. holding some other rooms, man. How mm -hmm. has the Clubhouse experience been for you? Well, let me tell you, after I got walked in by you, <laughs> I I just started following the people and I I was a baby. And so mm -hmm. I ended up in some interesting rooms. And <laughs> one of them I said I better get out because I'm not about to change my um picture into the new pictures of me. Not that I don't have any because I do, but I was not about to change my picture into that picture in the clubhouse. So I started out going everywhere. And then I realized um, as I took some of the, went into some of the rooms that were explaining clubhouse, mm -hmm. I realized that I could curate my own little rooms that pop up. So I go into a lot of film and television mm -hmm. and um, talent rooms, just trying to network and um, expand my reach outside of Atlanta. Cause I think I kind of share with you, like it's mm -hmm. so different here in Atlanta. And, you know, even though a lot of stuff is here in Atlanta, I mean, even some of the Atlanta people who have been acting for a long time, they still talk about how people import people into Atlanta and don't necessarily hire the actresses and, and people that are here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to expand my network. I, it's, it's so different. It may be different now, but when I got on reality TV, it was so different. And so the way you got an agent is then it's like they sought you out. Right. And I had my first season for me was powerful. I had so many people seeking me out and wanting to work with me, but they kept saying, if you get a second season, because they understand how reality shows work, right. the more seasons, the more 
you know, your brand expand. So right. um, it was just, it was just shocking for me. Some of the things that transpired with my show ultimately ended up now we're in the digital world. You can only see us if you pay Netflix. I mean, you play Hulu, Amazon and all those people. Right. So it changed. It was different for me because while I was in prime time, people were seeking me out. And so when that changed, you know, if you couldn't even get a name of an agent. I mean, in fact, today I'm still agentless. And I think it's just to their discredit. No. <laughs> well, no, I think you, I think you're true. And I'm going to say this, you know, oftentimes we think we need people. But the truth of the matter is they need us. You know, um, you I think with your ability, your reach and your personality, Clubhouse could be a really great gym for you, which is what I told you when I before yes. when I first walked you in, like, hey, go do this thing because it's so much you can do, so many contacts and networks you can build right in a, a, a virtual house mm -hmm. that you don't need the people outside to, to be able to do that. And when people come running, I always say this, people don't want to come attach themselves to you until you you shown them that you you somebody per se. And I feel like, well, once I've gotten to that point, I don't need you. I needed you before I got there. True. That, that's true to a degree. It just depends. Um, it's amazing to me, though, that I still get certain people reaching out to me. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've I've been tied up in a few deals since coming off TV. Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, they just have not been the ones for me. I spent two another two or th almost three years in development on a show with um, Glass Entertainment, but it just was not the right show. By the time we finished, the demand had changed. And right. I think they were really trying to carry on who I was as a mom on Mother's F Mother Funders. But, you know, my children, they were growing. And the mm -hmm. people don't understand that, well, the kind of mom that I am, which I say I'm the fabulous mom, um, you know, my life changes as their lives change. The older they get, the less they needed me, the right. more I can add back unto myself. So that even now people, um, some people don't even, they, they don't like certain pictures I post because they're, they're thinking I'm Mother Thunders, Carla, 2015 and 16. But I'm not. I don't have these young boys anymore that will see a slight cleavage and be like, ew, <laughs> you feel me? go put your cl some clothes on, mama. Don't come out here like this. Now they just look at me like, that's my mama. She lived half a century. She don't have that much time left. Let her live. <laughs> and so it, it's, I'm different now. So why I... I would I think I would be great in a show about moms, but I also think I'll be great in a show about business. I also think I mean, I don't think there's anything that I mm. cannot do at this point. Um, and no one was prepared for COVID. So True. it's in my mind, you know, just I've been going into a lot of rooms with COVID, but I've been going from the side because ever since um, being the co-producer on my show, Mother Funders, I have been creating content. Mm -hmm. And I've been creating it from the standpoint of um, trying to partner with production companies to go to the network and them sell to the network. And I've been doing it for so many years. I even had content to go all the way to real screen, get picked up by TLC, and then they didn't green light it. So after so many years of doing that, I'm like, OK, I got to do something different. And now being in the rooms of Clubhouse, I've heard so many things and people are like, just do it yourself just to... And honestly, I never was prepared to do it myself because I didn't get into this the way some of the other people did. I didn't even right. know. I was a writer. I've written poems. I had written a book. I've written songs. But right. I didn't even know that I had this in me to be able to write like shows and come up like I, I, I mean, I eat, sleep and dream ideas and I start writing the shows down. So that has been what I've been putting forth. And um, and actually, that's how I got connected to Glass Entertainment. I was trying to get my shows. I was pitching a show with one of their producers and they liked it. But they made a deal with me that they would take my shows if I would do a show with them. OK, so, yeah, I mean, it was it was I think that was one of the most amazing things to me when you, you don't know. You think, you know, but you don't know your reach because mm -hmm. soon as I went off um, with Mother Funders, like major production companies were reaching out to me and they was like, we, you know, we could see why Bravo put you on TV. 
why, you know, they felt like Bravo might have been afraid to just single, just use me. So they threw me in an ensemble. Um, and honestly, it did start off with just me. And, right. like that. and then I um, cast some other women. But I mean, I think the show was good. I meet people all the time now that say that show was great. Wish you guys could come back on, blase, blase, blase. But at the end of the day, it started for me like a new career. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> I, you know, younger days, I dabbled, went to fashion marketing school, got into a model a little bit, did a, a couple of TV commercials, but that it was like bucket list stuff. Right. Now, it's like every day I'm hungry for a way. So I've just been, I'm continuing to write. I'm continuing to uh, learn and train and try to increase my craft as an uh, actress, as a personality. And um, I'm just, you know, the pandemic has made me really think about, okay, what's this next step you're going to take? Because everybody's one, I, I pitched one of my shows in a pitch summit um, a couple of months ago. Uh -huh. And Four of the five production companies that were on there wanted like the show. And it's like they hurry up to do nothing. So a couple of them I'm waiting. Some of them have gotten back and say, ah. and this, this is what's so scary. I've been right. pitching so long. I pitched long enough to see one of my shows come out on a, on another station. Oh, like, wow. So, yeah, that's what's so scary about it. It now I kept feeling like, OK, I'm going to stop pitching because honestly, it's this thing in that area where they're like, Everybody can come up with the content. It's really who has the means and access to make it happen fast. Absolutely. So now they want you to sign in the in you know disclosure saying that there's a possibility that I was already working on a show like yours. And they lie. Yeah, you know, but I've honestly have seen um shows that I started pitching back in 2016 that are like on screen now almost to the t and so it's been a little discouraging to the point that i said okay you know what maybe i should just go ahead and, and do it myself so that's the learning phase that i'm in i'm really looking to partner with somebody if they are i am not opposed to get with somebody who already know what they're doing in this area right. and mashing my content and let's do this so um you know it's been a it's been an incredible journey i i just cannot complain I, I I completely understand. You know, I pitched the show. I still have the idea. I still have the WGA. It's already registered. And I'm thinking I've been thinking about this here lately. Like, hey, this show has not been done yet. You well, it hasn't been done. It. You better do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, you probably need to produce it yourself. Because just like you, you know, pitching it to people, you know, oh, man, this is a great idea. It's a really great idea. It's mm -hmm. a really great idea. We have to talk offline. I'll share it with you. But it's yeah. a really great idea. If you have the access and the means, you can do it. I just, I like the deal I had with Glass. It was so cozy. They uh -huh. shot my sizzles for me. Uh, you know, we traveled. The show was coming out of Dallas. We traveled there. They did everything. And so I guess, and even with Bravo, I was kind of spoiled because all the weight was on them. Now right. it's like, okay, do you have your own sizzle? Do you have you know, this, this, and that. And then if they say no, and you really believe in the idea, it's like, what are you prepared to do now, Carla? Okay. Yeah. So I'm rearranging everything, even my business to be as full blown as possible. So I can uh, start filming by the time um, I'm slowing to start now because of all the pressure with the pandemic and all the extra, you know, if it was a half a million dollar budget, it's going to be like a $2 million budget. Yeah, now. Absolutely because of the pandemic. So yeah. I'm preparing for um, better times or better budgets. <laughs> you know, some some angel investors or some, some people looking to put some money somewhere where I can triple what I need to actually run an appropriate set. So, you know. Definitely gonna need a better budget this go around. Yeah, oh yeah, it's no joke. I, I heard people talking about how, you know, the, some of the classes I took, how much money is costing mm -hmm. for some of these sets because you have to, the guidelines for filming and having production sets. So I can see that being slightly part of the issue too with some people taking on certain shows. It, you know, if it's not already something that, I think they're doing a lot of recycling. Even mm -hmm. if it looks different, it's still like recycling. You know what I'm saying? It definitely so, is. So, Carla, if people want to get at you online, how can they do that? Uh, actually, I am most active on Instagram right now. So I am the real Carla Stevens on Instagram. 
Um, if you get in the clubhouse, look me up. I'm Carla Stevens in the clubhouse. On Twitter, uh, I am Carla 100. And Facebook, I'm Carla Stevens. My um, uh, personality page is Carla Stevens. I have two pages on Facebook. I have my personal and then I have a public figure page. So um, but if they're both Carla Stevens and that like, but quickly Instagram DM me. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram, and um, I can't kind of like leave without saying you can also, uh, I'm an advocate for human trafficking. I've been actually, um, that was one of the beautiful things that came yeah. out being on TV. I was able to become a full blown ambassador and put a face on um, human trafficking for the African-American community. And it's opened up tremendous doors for me. So uh, I started an initiative called Stop Trafficking Mission Funding. Mm -hmm. And you could go out there to www.stmfcs.com. Um, Stop Trafficking Mission Funding, Carla Stevens. That's what the C is for, dot com. And check me out and support. Um, I'm launching another initiative next month. January is National Human Trafficking Awareness Month. Okay. And, uh, you know, I'm looking for an opportunity, if I can, to even talk about that um, initiative when next month rolls around. So. Okay. All right. Well, we'll circle back around with you so we can do just that. I, yes. I, I love what you're doing. And, yeah, you have been an advocate for human trafficking for quite some time. I think we was supposed to do something when I lived in Atlanta many, many years ago. An event got canceled. But. Yeah, uh, I will say let's circle back around and do something now. Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, Carla. Well, thank you so much for stopping by the fence and hanging out with me on our final yes. show. So uh, okay. we'll see you around the clubhouse. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Just now. Like I have the radio on the telly. You're in the mix. Oh,